Welcome back to Cruising America, everyone. Today we're visiting the Pit Houses and Pueblos in Mesa Verde National Park. We're Steve and Kathleen. We're Cruising America in our 35-foot fifth-wheel RV, chasing 70-degree weather year-round. If you'd like to watch our previous videos, please click the Cruising America playlist link in the description below this video. Otherwise, enjoy our current episode starting now. Indigenous peoples inhabited Mesa Verde between 500 and 1300 AD. Created in 1906, the park preserves the archaeological heritage of the ancestral Pueblo people, both atop the mesas and in the cliff dwellings below. The park includes more than 4,500 archaeological sites, including 600 cliff dwellings. Besides the visitor center at the entrance, the Chapin Mesa Archaeological Museum is 21 miles from the park entrance, where exhibits and dioramas trace the development of the Pueblo people. The Indians moved into the area around 500 AD. They built pit houses to live in. Over the next 700 years, they transitioned to cliff dwellings, eventually building elaborate stone communities in the sheltered alcoves of canyon walls. Life at Mesa Verde demonstrates a people adept at building, artistic in the crafts, and skillful at making a living in a challenging terrain. Ancestral Pueblo people grew crops and hunted, all on the mesa tops. Archaeologists believe at the time the weather and soil supported farming and hunting on the mesas. They spent most of their time getting food, even in the best years. The Indians grew squash, corn, and beans, and they worked the soil with digging sticks and often built check dams across draws to catch and hold rain and snow. In the early years, home was a pit house or a dugout. Even if fire destroyed their pit house, Pueblans would incorporate the original structure into a new adjacent structure. No sense in wasting anything, and it probably accommodated growing families. Over time, pit houses were dug progressively deeper, ostensibly for more protection from the weather. In addition, Pueblans lived as a community. They grouped as clans, societies, and extended families. This would naturally tend them towards aggregation of living facilities. Pit houses required constant maintenance and repair. Repairs were required for the mud roofs after every rain and after snow melt in spring. Timbers also required replacement when the bases rotted. Scientists estimate a pit house was completely rebuilt every 10 to 20 years. Consequently, their next evolution, around 850 AD, was to build single-story structures above ground. And because of limited resources and a community culture, structures shared walls. Within a hundred years, Pueblans evolved with new construction techniques, but maintained the room block and pit structure layout. Moving above ground prompted Pueblans to start developing advanced masonry skills. Not only did they develop new techniques, but they improved their tools. With or without wooden handles, the Pueblans used their greatest natural resource like we use metal today. By about 950 AD, Pueblans had switched to masonry from mud and wood to construct their room blocks. The construction minimized the demand for wood, a scarce commodity, and most likely saved lives because it was more fireproof. By the classic Pueblo period from 1150 to 1300 AD, 
Several generations probably lived together as a household in masonry structures with up to 30 rooms. These structures were the final evolution before Pueblins migrated to nearby cliff dwellings. Visiting the pit houses does not require a ticket. The exhibits are open to all visitors during park hours. Thanks for watching our latest episode of Cruising America. To see more of our videos, click the link to our channel in the description below. If you like our videos, please click the subscribe button, then click the bell next to it. YouTube will then send you emails telling about our new videos once they're posted.